What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of A Playmaker's View. I'm your host, as always, Jamie Burdish. I appreciate you guys joining the show. Today, I have a really cool guest, and I'm honored to have him on. His name is Tommy Eveld, a guy who's up and coming and making his way quickly to the big leagues. Um, you guys are going to get the chance to learn who he is. He's had an incredible story, kind of a tough route, an interesting route, uh, but I'm going to let him get into all that stuff. Hope you guys enjoy. As always, feel free to reach out to me or him if you have any questions or if you want to learn from him because, like I said, he has a pretty cool story and he's a pretty knowledgeable guy. So without further ado, we'll kick things off, and here we go. All right, guys, so like I said, I have Tommy Evel joining the show. Thank you so much, Tommy. I know you're a pretty busy guy with all that's going on. Uh, first off, as always, I like to you know let you the guests introduce himself. So without further ado, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and kind of what you do? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Jamie. Um, like you said, I'm Tommy Evel. I'm a relief pitcher in the Miami Marlins organization. Um, I came up playing baseball and football and then got to high school and my sophomore year kind of parted ways with baseball and just decided to stick with football for my junior and senior year. Went to the University of South Florida to play quarterback. Uh, after two seasons at quarterback, switched my position to safety and then blew my ACL out on my right leg had reconstructive surgery to fix it, uh, kind of pushed the envelope a little bit, trying to get back to make summer camp with the team to try to earn a spot and tore it again and during rehab. So then played that, that season with no ACL at wide receiver and started playing some slow pitch. Slow pitch turned into men's league, like a wood bat league, and then – from there, knocked on the coach's door at USF to ask him if I could try out his team for baseball. So 2015, I was playing football Monday to Saturday. Thursday nights, I was playing slow pitch. And Sundays during the day, I was playing in a men's league. And then the second half of my 2015 school year, I was on the baseball team. Hung up, the base, hung up my football cleats after that season to have my second ACL surgery. Stuck to just baseball for 2016. Got drafted in the ninth round by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Threw the ball pretty well for them. Got traded to the Marlins in 2018. And now we are where we are now. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, you quit baseball. Was there a reason behind that? And what kind of led you, um, you know, you were playing football at a Division One school. So what brought you back to baseball? Was it just, you know, your passion for the game? Or was there someone that kind of nudged you and said, hey, like, you know, you could be good at this? Um, so when I parted ways with baseball in high school, I just wasn't really getting a whole lot of playing time on the JV team. And, uh, it's kind of made pretty clear to me that I wasn't going to be on the team my junior year. I wouldn't make varsity. So uh, I just made the decision to stick with football. And then when I started getting back into baseball, it was kind of just my friends telling me like, Hey, you can throw a slow pitch softball pretty hard, pretty far. I think you can still throw a baseball. And I was like, I don't know. It's been four or five years. And they're like, oh, well, come play. Like, can you come pitch for our, our men's league team on Sunday? And I was like, I mean, I haven't pitched in forever. And uh, they were like, we don't care. We just want someone that can throw strikes. So went out and was doing that, was doing really good in that league. And then they pushed me to go knock on our coach's door and ask for a tryout. Yeah, so was that transition hard? I mean, like you said, you hadn't played baseball in five-plus years. So what kind of training went into that, too? Uh, was that difficult for you to kind of ramp up and, you know, prove yourself to those coaches? Um, well, Mark Kingston was the coach then. He's at South Carolina now. And he pretty much just wanted to see me throw 90 miles per hour and be able to control it for strikes. So uh, I had, I think it was three different days of tryouts. It was three or four different days of tryouts where uh, I went out and I was throwing. They had their radar gun on me. I was throwing 86, 87, and then they brought me back out two, three days later, had me pitch again, and there was no radar gun. I was just in a bullpen. And then the third time I threw was actually, like, live to hitters. And I actually remember on the 
throwing 86, 87 the whole time. And then I get all the way to my last pitch and he tells me, throw this one as hard as you can. I just want to see. And uh, I reached back and threw 190. It was right down the middle. And then he told me I was on the team right after that. Yeah, it's a pretty cool story. And like, I mean, could you ever imagine yourself being, I mean, let alone being a college baseball player, I want to transition into this, but now you're, you know, you're close to the big league. So did you ever see that happening for you? I mean, obviously as a kid, maybe you dreamed about it, but then you quit and look, now you here you are. So was there ever a thing like, hey, I might actually make it or were you just kind of going about it and it just kind of happened? Um, I don't know. It's kind of, I kind of refer to it as a long lost childhood dream coming true. Like as this process continues to turn into whatever it's going to turn into. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no way to, I don't even know how to put it in words. There's go to college, like hoping to be the next Tom Brady, hoping to be the next like big quarterback, get to the NFL. And then like, two months into my football career, I have a pretty traumatic injury. And while I was in the process of switching positions and it was just like, man, like what, where do I go from here? Like, am I going to be able to walk again? Am I going to be able to run again? Am I going to be able to play football again? And then it happens a second time a couple months later. And it's just like that whole thing starts all over again. And then I pick up a new sport and I was actually doing pretty well with the transition to football to baseball, I'd say the hardest thing is trying not to lift like a football player and be a relief pitcher at the same time. So was that like hard on you, like just the injuries and stuff? How mentally did you get through that? Obviously injuries are a pretty tough thing, but pushing yourself through that, you know, do you have words of wisdom for people who are going through injuries like that? And how did you, you know, manage all those tough things? Because like you said, you know, you wanted to be in the, the NFL um, and then you had some downfalls and now here you are. So do you have a piece of advice for people? Um, yeah, it actually, uh, it was kind of our mentality in the training room when I was playing football at USF with Willie Taggart. Um, he wanted everybody to be the best, just pushing everybody to compete, everybody to be their best every day. He said, if you want to be a champion, you have to be different than everybody else. And if you get hurt and you want to be a champion after you get hurt, you have to recover different. You have to, you have to spend more time in the training room. You have to outwork everybody else who's had that injury. If you want to be the best, you have to go out and you have to earn it. So I just took that mentality and I put it into my rehab, going in two, three times a day, getting treatment, doing all my exercise and then going home and then coming back, doing more treatment, doing more exercises, just always pushing the, pushing the trainers, like, give me something else. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Just to try to get back and get back out on the field. Yeah. So going into, I'm going to transition into, you know, you're in the minor leagues now. Um, do you use that kind of stuff that you've learned at that school? And I just want you to kind of go through your experience being a minor league baseball player, because a lot of people don't know how things work there you know everyone kind of looks at the big leagues and that's the big show but how has your career been like in the minor leagues have you gone through ups and downs uh you know what kind of things have you learned throughout your minor league career um i would say the the number one thing i've taken away from being in the minor leagues is you have to learn how to coach yourself like Every, you, you don't know who your coach is going to be like day to day, even you could be throwing good one day and they call you up to a new team and you get a new coach who's never seen you pitch before. Doesn't know what kind of pitches you throw, doesn't know how you like to attack hitters. So it's just something you have to kind of take a step back when you're doing really good and realize what pitches you're throwing, where you're throwing them, how you're attacking hitters how you're going after a, like a certain type of hitter. If you're facing somebody who's an average hitter, who's just trying to put the ball in play, what you're throwing to get him out. And then when you're facing a power hitter that's in there trying to do damage on every swing, what you're doing to get those guys out when you're throwing good, because you get sent to a new team, you get called up a level, you're going to have a new coach. That's not going to be able to help you with, with that. He's going to be able to give you his two cents on what he thinks you can do, but nobody's going to know your you better than you know you is what I would say I've learned being in the minor leagues. 
Yeah, so aside from, you know, everything you've learned and all that, what are you kind of up to? I want you to give us a brief overview. You told me, you know, you're you're with the team now. So, you know, what is your goal for this season? And just, you know, the road ahead, what does it look like for you? Um, I, it's, it's tough to say. Um, it's, it's one thing in baseball, you, you never know what's going to happen. Um, like you said, I was added to our taxi squad, which is a three three players that are traveling with the team just in case the team needs somebody so they don't have to fly us out. <clears throat> We're already here. Um, in terms of this season, it's, I mean, it's all out of my control. I, the only thing I can do is when I'm back in Jupiter or alternate training side is just make my pitches the best I can make them and trust the defense behind me to make the plays. So when you're in that taxi squad, I don't know if you can talk too much about this, but uh, what kind of things do you guys do? Do you practice with the team? Are you still able to, you know, throw your bullpens and all that stuff? Or is that still the, you know, alternate site kind of stuff? Yeah, so on the taxi squad, as a relief pitcher, my job is pretty much to stay ready to pitch tomorrow. So <clears throat> once I know I'm not activated and they're not going to purchase my contract, so I won't be playing in that game, everything that I have to do is with the anticipation that I I'm, might be pitching in the game tomorrow. So it's something where you might not want to go throw a 25, 30 pitch bullpen and then your arm be sore. If you want to get off the mound, maybe throw five, 10 pitches, you can, but just day to day, your daily routine has to be, what do I need to do to be able to perform at my best tomorrow? Yeah. So one last thing I kind of want to ask you is like we you've said, and we've talked about, you've been through a lot, um, the injuries, the ups and downs, you quit baseball, you're back now. Um, so is there one thing that you would kind of stress on players who are, um, I, I mean, I guess not knowing where they are kind of lost in their self and, you know, struggling to get that motivation. So what would you say to those people who, you know, want to make it to the big leagues or, you know, a higher level or even not even sports? What is a big motivation or, you know, tip that you would have for those people? Um, I would say find something you're good at and just work at it and work at it and work at it until you can be the best at it. Uh, another little saying I kind of took away from playing with Willie Taggart, he used to say there every – pretty much every day was attack every day with enthusiasm unknown to mankind. So once you find something you're good at it and you can put that kind of enthusiasm in it, you'll be the best at it. So I will, I'll link all your stuff below. I'm going to, you know, these right. episodes come out weekly. So I will, um, if you're okay with that, I'll post your social media and all that stuff. And once people know about you, they can reach out to you, you know, Hey, good luck. Um, or, you know, can I get some advice? All that good stuff. Uh, but like yeah. I said, Appreciate you coming on, and I hope the viewers today um, enjoyed this episode. If, Like I said, if you guys have any questions for Tommy, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, but that's going to do it for us on A Playmaker's View. Hope you guys are doing well, and we'll be back with you guys next week for another episode.